Thanks. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. So um, a little bit about Mary Poppins before I actually go through the PowerPoint. Um, I started this a couple of years ago because I have a little guy. He's 13 now. I mean, he would not like me saying he's little. Uh, <laughs> And when he was about 10 years old, um, we were still looking for care for him. And we went back to our old child care, and it was a home child care, and they were wonderful. And since he was a little bit older, um, and he has special needs, he has Down syndrome, um, they just said, you know, it doesn't really quite work for us. And they were really uh, caring about it, and they were very honest about it. And so it kind of led me down this path that there's other parents out there that need care for their kiddos at this age range and for kiddos with special needs. So this is inspired by my son who you will see in this PowerPoint. All right, so there are other reasons as I began to develop this uh, business is that there really is a child care crisis going on in our state and nationwide. I know this because I have a master's in education and I have an early childhood and an early childhood special education license. And so I do quite a bit of training for the state, um, for child care providers, home and center, for administrators, for schools, I've done consulting and coaching. And so I've really found that this is just not me. It's, it's not just my own family, it's the whole entire nation. So I kind of felt better, but then I didn't. I felt very unsettled. Um, also, when I originally started the business, it was just like a, a regular old business, you know, I'm going to make a profit off of it. Well, you know, as time kind of progressed and I really thought about this and then just seeing all the things going on around the world, um, my heart just started to uh, realize that we really need to uh, put more time and investment into our children. And so I decided to make it a social enterprise. Um, just in our state alone, because of increased state regulations, and they are good ones, so I don't want to sound like I am against the state, I'm very for the state and supporting the state. Um, they have increased the regulations because we're trying to very hard increase the quality of care for children across the board, whether they're typically developing or atypically developing. And as I use these words, these are words that we definitely use, terms that we use in the field of early childhood. Um, so I can answer more of those questions later on. So the other thing too that we have to keep in mind that when there is a lack of good quality care for children, there are long-term effects that um, we can account for. Parents are having difficulty maintaining their work hours. They have to use sick pay, they have to use PTO, um, or they just have to simply miss work and miss pay, and that's not good. Uh, sometimes we've known parents to lose jobs, and we don't obviously want that. Parents will find less adequate care. Um, when I have done my coaching, uh, child care providers have said, this mom, when I am not open, she has her child sitting in her car on the, her phone playing games. Okay, so that is some of the things that parents are resorting to because they're trying to take care of their family. Um, <clears throat> parents are less supported, and I think we're getting better at that as a society, but we, we still have a long, long way to go in comparison to other countries. Um, a child care provider is a professional, and that's something that we really need to increase our awareness of, is that they're a professional. They have to take a lot of training to understand how a child develops. Um, and so they provide significant guidance to a parent and their child um, if they meet or don't meet milestones. And parents depend on that. And it's really about that relationship as they grow that they really form a nice bond. And that's what I really loved about our child care is that we had formed a significant bond that they still remember the children. Um, my children are 19, 16, and 13. And so we are still connected to them and we love them very much. Um, parents rely on child care as an extended family member. So this is kind of where we do a little switcheroo that with nannies and sitters, they're kind of this extended family member that can kind of pick up where maybe a child care is not able to um, and do some of that extended work that will keep the families working smoothly. Um, so we are filling that need. Um, we're providing full support. Uh, we're the backup support and we're additional support. So depending on how our nannies and sitters are used, um, we are 
you know, kind of a plethora of things that we can uh, provide to the families. Sometimes we just help parents when um, they're not feeling well so that the children can continue to go to school and not miss school. Or we just simply help with getting groceries. Uh, just those little things are big things. So how do we find our nannies and sitters? Um, there's quite a process and we are not care.com. We are very uh, different from them in the fact that we have a more rigorous way of looking at applications. Uh, for every one request, we get over 100 applications hands down. And so we are really working hard to find that match for that family because every family is very unique and needs uh, different kinds of support. So we do a screening process. That means um, we're looking over everything to make sure that these are the requirements that the family set for us. And then also we'll encourage other types of requirements based off of their application. So the family has an application and the nanny has one. Um, we do interviews <clears throat> with the nannies and with the families. So we're making sure that both sides are a good fit. Um, and then later on, they get to meet and then see if they like each other. And so a lot of our um, referrals come through our website. They come from word of mouth. Uh, those are the main <coughs> two. We do background checks and we have, we use Higher Image as um, our background check and they're local, they're in the center. So then you know um, that we're using a local business. We do reference checks, so we're actually calling people and seeing, you know, are these people legit? Are they saying who they are? And um, do they have these credentials? And then we do a final placement. Um, and so that's been very fun over the years, uh, excuse me, over the years, sorry, uh, for these last few years to be working on this, uh, this type of uh, uh, excuse me, this type of business because it's very unique in the sense that um, parents, especially if they're a first-time parent, it's a very different if they're a parent for the third time over and how they approach. <laughs> some of you are nodding your head and how they approach, you know, receiving or having another person in their home. So anyway. Um, what do the nannies do? They give one-on-one -on -one attention to the children. They assist with daily activities and anything around the household. We do ask that that is delineated in the uh, interview process. They can provide transportation. Um, they're considered extended family members. And it really helps parents just to focus on work so that when they come home, they really get to be with their kids. They really get to get this quality time with their kids and not have this external stress. Because uh, ultimately that, that affects the family system as well. So what makes us unique? Um, I already went through the fact that I have you know, this education, in, which I think is very significant in understanding children development and how it relates to uh, parents as well. Um, and we also offer training in over 300, or excuse me, 30 topics. I got my other business and stuff. Um, and so I think that's really important because if there's something that the caregivers are lacking, we can provide that training. So this is my little guy, he's quite a bit older. And so our latest feature is that we have an app. Um, and this took a lot of work. I've never done something of this nature before. And I'm learning how this is working. But this has really been a great thing for us because it helps us document data and track it a lot better so that we are making sure that we're getting high quality people. Um, it, it keeps us, um, updated in our files a lot quicker and a lot easier and it's less time consuming and it keeps costs at a minimum. For this, we don't charge the parents and the nannies to connect with each other. Really, it's about them connecting as quick as they can with as high quality as they can. Um, so things that Mary Poppins Nanny Service needs is that we mainly need you know, some help with the social media area. We have over 4,500 nannies and families on our Facebook page. Uh, and so I would love to expand it to like Instagram and we'd like to, to have some revision of the content on our website because a lot of people say, well, it's a little bit confusing. We've tried to make it clear, but apparently there's still not the clarity that we need. And we would just love people to share our app. And so thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.